I'm Dr. Lavana Cohen, clarinet professor at LIU Post. And I just wanted to take a moment to talk to you about embouchure today. Let's talk about the perfect embouchure. Video chat is a great way to explore the perfect embouchure because I can get real close and I can demonstrate it. So with the perfect embouchure, your corners are back, your chin is flat, and your cheeks are in. No blowfish faces, right? Okay, then the other aspect of the perfect embouchure is inside your mouth. Now as teachers, we can't see what your tongue is doing, but we can hear the difference. When your tongue is nice and high inside your mouth, like you're saying E or V or key, then you play more in tune you squeak less and you have more control over your sound. So as Michael Lowenstern always says, keep your tongue in the, on the top floor. Your tongue is like an elevator. So it's E, E, A, E. Those are the different floors that your tongue visits inside your mouth. So say with me, E, E, A, E. So you can explore what it feels like to move your tongue down and up. E, E, A, E. You want to stay out of the basement. The E uh zone is never appropriate for clarinet. You want to stay in the E top floor of your mouth. Um, so there's a couple of reasons why a clarinetist might not be maximizing their sound production. One might, the, the number one reason is that they're not blowing um, enough air into the instrument. Uh, you are worth being heard. So part of it's a confidence thing, just go for it, you could do it. Um, the next, the, another reason why a person might not be maximizing their sound production is um, perhaps they're um, they're biting too hard and they're constricting the reed. You can experiment with your bite pressure a bit. Also experiment with the amount of mouthpiece that you're taking into your mouth, right? Too little, you're constricting the reed. Too much, and you're gonna get um, an unfocused and squeaky sound and flat sound as well. The angle of the instrument is also something you can experiment with. Um, if you're holding the instrument too close to your body, so your tongue on, these are your teeth on the, on the mouthpiece. If you hold the clarinet too close to your body, you can see that it constricts the reed, the reed's vibration when it's too close. You always wanna hold it about 45 degrees away from your body. 90 degrees, again, you start to constrict um, the reed. So the sweet spot is somewhere right in here. You can kind of mess around with it a little bit. And you can play with it and see where your sweet spot is. Then the, the, next, um, the next reason why a person might be not maximizing their sound production, maybe they're playing on too hard of a reed. Or opposite, if you're playing too soft of a reed, the sound is gonna be harder to control. You're gonna squeak more and maybe you're flat. So experiment with the reed strength. Um, and for more detailed information on these tips, you can click on the link below um, to access my article, Good Vibrations, Tips for Maximizing Sound Production on the Clarinet. Hi, so now we're gonna, we're gonna practice your perfect embouchures by doing some warm up, some simple warm up exercises. Warm up exercises are a terrific way to practice your embouchure and make sure that everything is in place, right? So we're gonna start with our G major scale, starting on low G. Don't forget your B natural 
and your F sharp. Sometimes people forget those two things when they play G scale. We're gonna play it in half notes. And uh, when we get to the top note, we'll repeat it and come back down. So one, two, ready, play. <laughs> So a perfect way to make scale exercises meaningful is to make every note sound beautiful. And you can do that by practicing your perfect embouchure. Did you remember to keep your corners back and your chin flat and your cheeks in? No blowfish faces, right? Okay, there's that perfect embouchure again. Now we're gonna do another simple exercise and it's, a, it's, a, it's based off of an exercise that I found in Avram Galper's book, Tone Technique and Staccato. It's an excellent book, you should check it out. There's many great warm-up exercises in that for you to reference. Um, so this, it's, a, it's a returning scale and we'll do it on the G scale. So we're just gonna start on open G and then we go down one note, back to open G down the next note, back to G, and so forth. So feel free to join me when you feel comfortable. Ready, play. Also do the same exercise going back up from starting on the low G. Remember to keep your tongue nice and high inside your mouth like you're saying E or T or TH. Um, Michael Lowenstern also talks about the tongue elevator. So you want your tongue high up on the top of the top floor. E not eh, not ah, not uh, but e. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start on the low note. We're gonna do our returning G scale and ending on our open G. <laughs> get better at this, you can bump it up an octave and play in the clarion range too. So that's all for now. I'm Dr. Cohen with LIU Post and happy practicing.